Hi dudes, this is Mantinus 358's channel and you can call me Mantinus. This video clip is about live plants and how and why I keep them. Uh, the plants I keep is um, more than just looks alone and I've probably said that in my channel that I believe by keeping the right type and quantity of plants that I can maintain a good healthy aquarium for the fish. Well, well guys, um, in this clip I'm just going to show you how and why um, keeping plants. Bear in mind that I'm no professional and I'm doing this um, and trying to share my experiences. First of all, I'd like to say that in most of my tanks the, um, the setup is extremely simple. There's no CO2 gas or no fancy chemicals to keep my plants alive. I also don't do regular pruning or aquascaping, although you probably can tell by how uh, chaotic, chaotic the plant setups are. The main purpose of um, keeping plants is ultimately for the fish's health and no other, uh, not the other way around. I always only keep a couple of variety of plants and in doing so have kept it really simple. You can say it's a low-tech setup, but my ultimate purpose is really just to balance the aquarium to reduce maintenance and water changes and probably ultimately costs as well. Uh, a prime example of how useful plants are is camouflage and shelter is my 38 litre tank. And here you can see um, just behind the brush of the uh, Lugwiga is the uh, German ram and um, he's actually quite hardy. He's extremely shy like a lot of um, German rams are and, um, and the plants actually serve a good purpose to help help it hide and when it's not too shy he actually will come out and um, that's actually a good thing. Uh, and you can see here the love is actually quite luscious um, and the growth rate is actually uh, quite good and it's chaotic the growth um, I don't really prune it or anything so yeah another example of uh, hiding places and uh, shelter I've got uh, my sump underneath the four foot tank and in there is actually a lot of uh, bronze quarries I originally had three but because I put plants in there uh, it gave them comfort and, um, and security so they end up breeding. There's probably around about 15 quarries by now but um, the plants I've got in there mainly are it's uh, java fern, anubis, uh, java moss and at the top if I move it up a bit it's actually Lugwiga. Um, all of that just on a, um, on a normal light bulb. And it's quite good actually for them. And you probably just saw the two adults probably trying to do some mating again. Anyway, another reason for um, having plants is actually. It's actually a natural source of food for a lot of the fishes. You can see the algae eater eating the algae, um, which sells on a lot of the plants. Um, the other thing is uh, I've got koi and uh, goldfish in there. And what they do is actually nibble on the plants, which is a good thing because it will give them a very diet besides all the other stuff I feed them, like lutworms and vine shrimp and flake and whatever and um, you can't get any fresher than uh, live plants really uh, growing in there. Um, the only trick is you've got to really um, make sure there's enough uh, plants in there for them to feed off, and, which isn't a problem with me because I've got five tanks to, to um, raise a lot of plants. Another um, type of fish that eats uh, my plants is actually koi. I grow the Lagwiga and you can see some right at the top there in the middle of the tank, my seven foot tank. And um, there used to be a whole heap of it that basically um, 
demolished it um, when they're hungry. Um, koi being koi, they eat anything really, um, including plants. So you can't get any um, better than live plants if you're growing them. And that's what I've been feeding them. And what I do is I actually transfer some from my four foot tank and the 38 litre tank uh, when it becomes too excessive and I just throw it in there and and when the koi is hungry they just um, basically demolish uh, those latwiga. Another reason for plants, um, it's probably the third reason, it's probably one of the most important, is um, nutrient absorption. It acts like a buffer, um, absorbing uh, nitrogen, phosphates and the like. And uh, in this tank, uh, I've got a Giardini. He obviously doesn't eat any of the plants, but um, what the uh, Java fern on the bottom, what they do is um, they try to absorb any ammonia and nitrogen and phosphate that the uh, uh, my Giardini named Sam um, gives off. And this applies probably to all the tanks, not just including this one. But um, it's probably one of the best examples where, like, um, um, if you've got a carnivorous fish and that's all they eat, uh, and they're not going to munch on anything, any plants, it's probably best to put live plants in there, just so to um, help clear out the water in terms of the excess nutrients. And and by doing so. Um, what will happen is uh, you probably there's probably a good chance that uh, you don't have to uh, change water as often because um, all the nitrites and the nitrates and the ammonia and the phosphates gets absorbed by the um, um, plants as they grow and um, being um, and it, in this tank it's just all Java fern really and. Uh, They've grown to such a stent that I had to put it in the um, seven foot tank. Just earlier, you saw in the seven foot tank um, because they're so rampant. Just to give you a um, black and white example of how plants can affect uh, nutrient uh, in a fish tank, I've got a uh, 20 litre uh, a curved glass tank, um, and in it is a uh, for um, glow light uh, tetris and within that is um, all these laguiga if you look closely at it um, laguiga is actually not uh, it's not that healthy compared to my 38 litre um, even though it's still surviving and I, I attribute that to um, mainly because um, there's lack of nutrients um, understand that I don't really put nutrients in my tank other than the fish food so um, it's pretty much deprived of it in this tank and because of that um, the, uh, the like we, we got the, the, the leaves are actually quite small um, compared to the others even though it's not too obvious in, in this in this picture because I've made a close-up of it but um, you look closely um, uh, a lot of the stems are actually losing leaves and um, it's probably not as green as the other uh, tanks as well and luscious um, yeah only because um, the plants have probably absorbed as much as um, nutrients as possible in such a tiny space uh, uh, the other thing is um, algae growth is actually um, pretty much minimise. Um, I rarely clean any algae off it, if there's any, and I actually do deliberately leave any algae there just to give it, give this tank a, a mature look. Yeah. Well, we're back here at the, the seven foot tank, uh, side view, um, with my red devil cross in the foreground and all the cores in the background behind the partition. The, um, it's what's on the petition we really want to talk about, and that's a Java fern. Well, the Java fern is actually from the uh, six foot tank uh, where the Giardini is, and because it's been so rampant, rampant, um, it's grown to an extent that um, I've got so much that I had to put it somewhere. I put it in this tank um, 
kind of facing um, the Red Devil Cross only because the koi would eat all the java fern, which I really don't mind, except for the fact that I want it to use, being used as a semi-water purifier, so to speak, to absorb any nitrogen and phosphates and so forth. Um, so far, it's been a month or so. Um, he's still alive um, and he's still stuck there, so that's actually a good thing. Um, they haven't disintegrated on me yet, so, um, but we'll see how we go. Having the java fern on the other side would um, be detrimental because the coil would just munch it and demolish all of that. But anyway, um, so that's the reason why uh, I keep plants in my tank um, and I hope that um, it might prove useful to someone in trying to keep the fish tanks as well. So if you like my videos just um, please subscribe if you like and, and that's it. Thank you.